All right, so here is the number one issue all relationships face. And if you solve this issue, you can fix your relationship. <laughs> the first thing you need to know is it's your fault. Now, I got to be honest. It's easy to say it's somebody else's fault. But I can promise you that if you don't resolve that it's your fault that the relationship's not working, it's not going to work. It's really simple because you have far more influence, control, and position than you realize. You just need to exercise. Now, I don't mean physically exercise. Of course, that, however, for some of you, that might be a relevant thing to consider. But more importantly, I'm talking about exercising your voice. I know that most of us think we do this one thing, and it's called communication. You think you do it, and you think you do it well. It goes a little bit like this. I told her what I wanted to say, or I expressed to him what I was feeling, and they ignored it, or they didn't get it, or whatever, whatever, whatever. The bottom line is you felt like you communicated, and you probably did. I'm not saying you didn't communicate. I'm not saying you don't know how to communicate, but you might want to call your skills into question. Here's what I mean by that. How many times have you been in an argument and it was just a result of miscommunication? It's happened before, right? Because you're saying one thing, you think it's resonating with your audience or the person you love over here, and it's just not. Part of the reason why that's happening is most of the time, we communicate from the space of who we are. We communicate from the space of what we want. We communicate from the space of what we think needs to be said. But one of the greatest keys to communication that's often overlooked is listening. When we don't take the time to just listen and absorb and hear, we're stuck in our head about what we think. And when we're stuck in our head about what we think, but we're trying to connect with somebody else, it just can't happen. It won't happen. Because what happens is we start cycling, we start getting impatient to be able to say what we think is the answer or the counter to what they're talking about. And I understand because I often have to check that myself. But communication is the key that's going to unlock it. You just got to be willing to know when to be quiet. It's one of the critical keys in communication, knowing when to be quiet and really hearing and really creating space for your partner, your loved one, the person you're in communication with to really say their piece. You may find that they misunderstood something. Mm -hmm. You may find they're actually right. It can go many different directions that will open you up and allow you to see, but unless you're listening, can't happen. The second thing, well, before we hit the second thing, let's stay there for a second. If you listen and really take it in without preparing your response, you might discover responses not needed. They just needed to be heard. But more importantly, when you do respond, you'll be able to respond to what the actual issue is and not what's in your head, which can lead you down a path of solution. I'm just saying. The second thing that you've got to be willing to do when you're in communication and you want to communicate effectively, or let's say it this way, it still gets in the way of your communication, is how you communicate. Are you seeking to be right? Because if you're seeking to be right and that's the undertone, that's the subtext of your communication, hey, I feel for you. Ashaka Khan says, I think I love you. If you never heard that, look up the phrase, I feel for you. I think I love you. The song will come up, you might and dance and have a great time. But I do, I feel for you. Because you're in the wrong state of mind to build. You can't build if you want to be right. You've got to come out of that shallowness of who you've been to discover who you are so you can just be present for the person you love. I have a saying that I like to use that helps me uh, when I'm talking to people and reminds myself of how to be in this whole world. And, and the saying is something like this. You can be, I'd rather be in love than to be right. And I don't mean in love, goo goo gaga. That's, that's different. I'm talking about in love in the context of exchange. Do you want the exchange or do you want to be right? 
in this Western mindset that many of us live in or this egotistical state that many of us still live in, basically a child being grown, where we think we need to prove something, we throw away the most tangible, most precious, most polished, most amazing gift of the moment right there. That precious moment that you're having right there that could build, that can connect, that can allow your relationship to breathe and bond and expand. You throw it away because you're more interested in being right than you are in being in love. Mm, so good. And last but not least, I'm going to challenge you. You think you know how to communicate, but if you haven't thought about what it is you're trying to connect with your audience around, then you're just using words. And as you're just using words, you're probably not paying attention to those words. You're probably speaking it from your world. You're not paying attention to what it is you actually want from them. You're just saying what you feel. And when you state everything you feel, you're foregoing what's really true. Now, I'm not saying don't express your feelings. Of course you should express your feelings. In order, if I were to say that, that means don't express love, right? So that would be foolishness. But what I mean is slow down, process, speak from the place of me, my, and I. Even when you, especially when you're talking about your feelings, I feel. Not because you did or you said, I feel. This means to me, my take on it is, and then be open and go, what's yours? There's a story in the book written by Stephen Covey, God, probably 25, 30 years ago, but it's still a really great book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I only remember one story from the whole book. I'm going to tell it to you. There was a day in Florida, a hot, humid day in Florida, like any other day. People have to adjust and get used to it. But on this particular day, people were on the city bus, and a man got on the bus with his two children. The man was calm. He was solemn, dressed decently. It was hot. The air conditioning wasn't working on the bus. The children were playing and kind of moving around the bus doing what kids do. And unfortunately, the way the buses move, kids bump into a couple of the people that were sitting there. And the man didn't do anything. Finally, some man garnered up enough nerve to say, hey, mister, why don't you take care of your kids and tell them to sit down somewhere? And the man responded and said, I would. But I don't know how to tell them their mother just died. You see, when we're in communication with somebody we love, we don't know what's in their head. We don't know what they're experiencing. We can assume, and usually we're assuming from our place, and that's mistake number two. That's why listening and being present, asking great questions is a pathway there. I'm gonna share a whole lot more relationship tips and stuff like that. I need you to do me a favor though. Join my free VIP group, click, click the link below where we talk about things like this and other important matters so you can have the kind of communication and relationships you desire you deserve and you would love to have. You can have that. In the meantime, please share this with somebody you love. Encourage them. They might join as well. You guys can have some great dialogue and exchange in my free VIP group. Hit the bell. Comment below. I love to exchange with you. Thanks.